Hi everybody. Hi guys, so uh, my name is Taylor Ray. I am a member of the Pravana Collective and I am here to talk to you guys today all about formulating for vivids, how to achieve the perfect canvas and how to deal with underlying pigments. So I'm just gonna hang on for a minute while we wait for everyone else to pop on. Um, I do have my other camera flipped around because I'm gonna show you guys some visuals and I wanna make sure that you guys can read them correctly. So I do have a separate screen down here that I will be checking comments on. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. So hi everybody. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm so excited to share my knowledge with you. So as I said, my name is Taylor Ray. I am here to talk to you guys today about formulating for vivids, how to deal with your canvas, especially with underlying pigments in the client's hair, as well as the underlying tones in the color. So what I would like from you guys today is I would love to for you guys to participate. Um, tell me in the comments if you guys have any um, you know, if you're having any struggles or any specific questions regarding to toning for vivids, vivid application techniques, and how to deal with underlying pigments. I would love to see those in the comments. Hello from Spain. Hello from Toronto. Hi, you guys. It's so good to see you. We're just going to give it another few seconds for people to pop on. And if you guys didn't hear me before, I do have my phone flipped around to the front camera so that the visuals I show you, you guys will be able to read. So I do have a second screen down here that I will be reading comments on. So I'm not ignoring you, I promise. Just paying attention to your comments. So how are you guys doing on this awesome Thursday? Thank you guys so much for being here. If you're working in the salon, if you have a day off, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. So excited to get down to business today. So. As far as what we will be discussing, obviously, if you guys know my work, I specialize in vivid color. It's my favorite. I love turning all of my clients into beautiful rainbows. And normally when I do lives, I do a technique and I show you guys how to blend and melt the colors. But I kind of wanted to switch things up today by explaining to you guys how to formulate for vivids. You know, we can't build a house without a good foundation. So again, I wanted to discuss how to properly lift and the specific levels designed for each vivid color. Are you guys ready? All right, so here we go. Sorry, when I talk a lot, I get a little parched. So I'm just gonna take a little sip. Okay, hi guys. So as I'm explaining, I would love to hear if you have any comments, um, questions, anything like that. Please let me know in the comments. I will definitely be checking on those periodically. And I think that we are ready to jump into it. So the number one thing, you guys, as I said, you can't build a house without a good foundation. And for me, the foundation of any vivid service is the blonding. Am I right? So it's very important to know which level of blonde that your desired vivid is meant to be on. So one thing that I love about the Pravana color book is I'm going to show you guys. So these are pages out of our Pravana color book. And what I want to show you is that we have put for you each level that each, I'm sorry, the desired level of each vivid shade that this is supposed to go on. So let me kind of come up here a little bit for you. So as you guys can see, neon pink is for a level 10. Neon orange goes on a level nine. Neon green as well on a level nine. Can you guys see that? There we go. And all the way down. Now you get down to our pastels, and as you see, our pastels are all recommended to be applied on a level 10. Whoops, sorry, I realize you guys can't see that. It's hard to do with the two different screens. So, as I was saying, our pastels, we recommend that they're always on a level 10. Now, do you guys know why this is? Let me know in the comments. So the reason that we recommend that you apply all of our pastels on a level 10 is because there is little to no yellow underlying pigment left to give you the truest pastel tone. So I feel like as stylists, we're all visual learners. So I uh, did a couple of swatches here that I'm going to show you. So here we have the same color on two different swatches. This is going to be our pastel luscious lavender, one of my absolute favorite colors. So as you guys can see, this is on about a level seven, eight, and this is on a level 10. Can you guys see the difference in these two colors? 
So the reason that the level 10 is so true to tone is because there is no underlying yellow for the purple to cancel out so that you get a true lavender tone. However, if we come over here to about this level eight, you can see that it's not really purple. The purple more just kind of canceled out the underlying yellow in the swatch. Do you guys like that? Is it a good visual? Cool, let me see if you guys have here in the comments. Excited to learn more. Awesome, okay, so um, as I said, you guys, I kind of dropped these on the floor, but so it is very important to remember that all vivid colors don't necessarily have to go on a level 10, and I really would like to explain to you why that is. So my number one question when it comes to vivid colors is specifically around our color Wild Orchid. So I'm gonna pull that out here. So Wild Orchid, if you guys can see on this box here, we have the number seven circled. So the reason that is, is because we recommend Wild Orchid be applied on a level seven. Now again, we're all visual learners, so I wanted to kind of show you guys why that is. Let me pull this up here for you. Can you guys see these okay? Let me know. So as you guys can see, this is Wild Orchid on two of two different um, swatches. So Wild Orchid here on this level seven is this beautiful, deep, rich, purple pink tone. But here, if you apply it on a level 10, it's a lot more hollow and I would say more of like a hot pink tone. Do you guys know why that is? The reason is, is because Wild Orchid and red and our orange, it actually requires the underlying yellow and warmth at the level seven to make it true to tone. Now you can definitely apply any of our vivid shades on any level of blonde, whether it's seven, eight, nine, or 10, but just remember that the underlying contributing pigments are gonna make the color look a little differently. And this is one of my favorite ones to show. What do you guys think about that? Awesome. So I showed you why Wild Orchid and red and orange and yellow require a level seven, that warmth of the underlying pigment. Now I wanna go into another color that I feel some stylists sometimes struggle with and I definitely know I did until I really understood you know, the color wheel and color theory, which is blue. Whether that be our dark blue to our blue topaz, aquamarine, or all the way up to a pastel blue, we recommend that all of our blues be applied on a clean level 10 that has little to no yellow underlying pigment. Do you guys know why that is? Let me know. We have some smarty pants in here. Okay. Oh, hi, thank you guys so much for joining in. So um, as I was saying, we recommend that blues, any of our blues are applied on a level 10 and I do want to show you why. So again, here we have our swatches. I use our Vivid Blue, which is this one right here. And as you can see on the bottom, we have the level 10 circles. Again, as we recommend the level 10 underlying tone. So this is our blue on a level 10 and on a level seven, eight. Can you guys see the drastic difference in the underlying tone of this? So again, as a level seven works really great for warmer tones like wild orchid, red, and orange, it's definitely not gonna be a case for cooler tones because even though this is a beautiful teal color, if you're wanting a really rich blue, you wanna make sure that there is no underlying pigment in the hair, which is why this looks so nice blue on this level 10 and over here looks a little teal. Can you guys see that okay? Awesome. So as I said, I feel like stylists were all really visual learners and I enjoy swatching on strands as well as um, sheets of paper because I really like to bring my clients into the conversation because sometimes I feel as knowledgeable as we are as stylists, things get a little lost in translation when we're explaining things to clients as far as why they can't achieve the color that they want or you know they don't really understand levels of blonde, right? So. One of my favorite things to use is this little fun booklet that has a few different levels of underlying pigment. 
that mimic your client's hair so you can actually swatch out and show your client and explain why we can't do the color that they want or why we can or which level will work best. So this is one that I have. Um, this is a silver swatch. And silver is one of those colors where, you know, there's blue undertones, maybe green undertones, maybe blue undertones, um, or violet undertones, I'm sorry, I already said blue. So again, this is a nice visual, and all of our sil silvers I recommend on a level 10, which is why I'm doing it on the lightest. But let's kind of flip through this page here and see all the different colors. So as you can see on this one, I was trying to swatch out a nice teal from my client, and she was lifted to about a level nine, which is why I'm using this light yellow here. So we started up here, and this just seemed a little too blue, so I kept adding more green until she liked the color. Again, I'm all about bringing my client into the consultation and letting them be a part of the color mixing so that they feel more comfortable and you know just included in the whole um, in the whole process. So. How are you guys liking this? I'm going to pop in here and see if you guys have any good questions. Oh, good information. Let me go up here. So um, Kat says, I am having trouble getting rid of a green base um, and lifted the hair to a level 10 except for the mids and ends and it's a pastel green. So this is a great question. So in my experience, and maybe you guys have experienced this as well, blues and greens are some of the more difficult colors to lift completely out of the hair. So as she stated, she did lift it out to a clean level 10 at the top, but then the mids and ends were like a nice pastel green. So what would we do with this? We always want to remember the color wheel and the colors that will go ahead and cancel each other out. So as always, I bring out my trusty Pravana color book that literally is like my color Bible, you guys. This has everything you could ever need, all the information for you for every color service. So let's go ahead here and go to the color wheel. So she is having issues with green. So we would go right across and that would be red. So to cancel out green, if it's a pastel green, I would recommend using our Express Tones in Rose Gold. So that's going to be this rose gold right here. Now, we do also have a Vivid's rose gold. So I'm so glad that we're talking about using toning and express tones because toning before a Vivid service is also a great way to tone to set the tone, cancel out any underlying pigments that you're not wanting, and also they help to enhance your end results. So I hope that helps. So for example, I have a lot of clients who like to flip sides of the color wheel. And again, if I'm dealing with underlying yellow, or I'm sorry, underlying green or underlying blue, I will go ahead and use our Express Tones Rose Gold in Zero Lift Developer for 20 minutes. This will diminish any of that green that is still in the hair. And then it will leave a nice neutral base for me to then go ahead and apply on top my warmer tones that I'm looking for. Isn't that kind of cool? Also, I love toning before a vivid surface, especially if I'm using, um, if my client's wanting pastel color like lavender, um, moody blue, or even smoky silver like my own hair. If you tone and then apply a vivid on top of it, in my personal experience, it lasts longer and it fades truer to tone because you're canceling out any of that unwanted warmth or underlying pigment. Isn't that kind of cool? I love it. Let me pop in here. It will turn green, yes. Hi you guys, oh I'm so glad you guys are loving this. Can I throw up the card? Oh yes, sorry guys, I get so excited that I talk super fast and I realized that I didn't leave the card up very long for you guys to take a look at as far as the ideal underlying levels for each Vivid. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over that with you guys because I think, again, this is the number one thing when it comes to a Vivid service and creating a good foundation. So I'm gonna come up here, and Neon Pink is ideal at a level 10. Neon Orange is ideal at a level nine. Neon Green, oh, there we go. Neon green is ideal at a level nine. Neon yellow, level nine. Neon blue, level 10. And all of our pastels are at a level 10 as well. I'll leave that there for you. I also realized that I'm not the best at being Vanna White, so I can also go ahead and put these in my Instagram stories at Taylor right here after the live, so you guys can go ahead and check that out, all right? I did drop these other ones on the floor. So here we go. Now we're gonna go into 
yellow at a level nine, rose quartz at a level 10, pink at a level 10, orange at a level seven, silver at a level 10, sunstone at a level 10, jade at a level eight, aquamarine at a level nine, blue topaz at a level 10, purple tourmaline at a level nine, garnet at a level eight, and emerald at a level nine. Can you guys see these okay? Cool, I'm gonna pop in here. Let's see. All right. Keeping a swatch book is essential. Yes, 100%, you guys. Again, as stylists, I feel like we are visual creatures, and no matter how well we think we explain things, sometimes clients, you know, things get lost in translation, so I love having a swatch book or swatches or things that you and the client can kind of sit down and have a good consultation about. Because let's be honest, how many times have you guys had a client show you a photo of like a rose gold and like, oh, I want this rose gold, but I don't want warmth. And you're like, well, rose gold is gold, right? It has warmth. So I always like to have them show you photos. And then I ask them, what specifically do you like about this photo? And also what colors do you see? right? Because again, we see maybe pastel pink, but the client thinks it's rose gold. So this is another great way to sit down and show them a visual. So speaking of rose gold, rose gold is ideal at a level nine, moody blue at a level 10, smoky silver at a level 10, magenta at a level seven, red at a level seven, wild orchid at a level seven, like I discussed before, violet at a level seven, green at a level nine, blue at a level 10, and then over here we have our additives. We have clear pastel, clear dilute, and then our vivids black. Are you guys familiar with any of these additives and have you used them? Do you guys have any questions? I know that I had a question yesterday. I put up a poll asking you guys if um, you had any struggles or anything that you specifically wanted me to go over. And I know someone did ask me about these additives, so I wanted to take this chance to kind of explain these to you. So I know it's kind of confusing because you're like, what is a clear vivid? I mean, it obviously doesn't go on clear. So we have two clears. We have clear pastel and clear dilute. Now the difference is we use clear pastel when we are wanting to pastelize a color. So for example, if you are wanting to do, say, a purple tourmaline, but you want it a little lighter, right? We would mix equal parts clear pastel and purple tourmaline to go ahead and soften up that color, but still keep its tonal value. However, if we used clear dilute, with our purple tourmaline, it's going to lighten up the color but still keep its vibrancy. So the difference is pastel makes it softer and clear dilute will keep the tonal value but make it brighter. Is that kind of a good explanation? I love having both of these options to really customize my client's looks. Now let's talk about Vivid's Black because I feel like black is a really misunderstood color because a little goes a long way so you can um, kind of use too much of it too fast. So whenever using you, uh, each of the clears, you're going to want to put the clear into the bowl and then add the color, for example, purple tourmaline into the bowl until you get your desired color. But when you're dealing with Vivid's Black, you want to have your color and then add little bits of black into it, right? Because as we know, it's much easier to go darker than it is to go lighter, right? So when using Vivid's Black, I love to use it when I am trying to smoke out a color. So for example, if I want a deeper silver, I would use our Vivid's Silver. Let me go ahead and pull that up here. I don't have any, so let's just do... Let's just say we wanted to do Moody Blue, which is a level 10, and we'll add our Vivid's Black. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna give me a nice smoky blue, but then the Vivid's Black is going to make it a little deeper and more smoky. So again, it's just one of those things that you can add into your arsenal of Vivid Colors to really customize your client's look. What do you guys think about that? I'm just gonna pop down here. Let me see. All right. 
So a lot of you guys are asking about my hair color and I can totally tell you what it is. So my hair is lifted to a clean level 10 and then I use our Express Tones Smoky Silver and Clear in equal parts for 20 minutes. One of the things I do love about, so it's gonna be this one here. So one of the things that I do love about our Express Tones, they're great for your blondes and then they're also great for toning before a vivid, is these are a true demi color. So that means there's no ammonia and they won't touch the client's natural base. I do have a lot of clients that I do a heavy highlight or say a balayage look on. And when I'm toning before a vivid, I definitely wanna make sure that I don't use anything that's going to lift their natural pigment. So as you guys can see, your girl's got a lot of roots up here, okay? And even though I haven't had my hair done since July, I wanna keep up the nice smoky tone of my blonde, but, or yeah, of my blonde, but because I'm about a level five, six naturally, I don't wanna ex um, expose that underlying warmth that's in my natural color. So that's why these are such a great option. So I hope that answered you guys' question about my color. So let's come down here. Can you tone out the hair with violet to get the hair white, then put another color on it so you can get a true to tone. That's a great question. So her question was, can you tone the hair using a violet based toner and then apply another color over it so that it fades true to tone? Absolutely. I am a definite hardcore advocate for toning before a vivid services, vivid services, specifically if it's going to be a pastel, um, a rose gold, a silver, or a soft blue, just because those colors traditionally fade really quickly, right? And it's super frustrating for the clients that want this gorgeous soft color, but in four or five washes, it could be gone. So for example, you can tone with our Express Tones in Violet for 10 minutes to cancel out any underlying yellow in the hair, and then go ahead and apply another um, Vivid on top of it as like Purple Tourmaline or even our Luscious Lavender to fade true to tone, and I, in my experience, last twice as long, which that's always the goal, right? To get the client's color to last as long as possible. And someone asked, what is the difference between toning with 10 or zero? This is a great question. So if you're unfamiliar with the Pravana um, developers, we have zero lift, 10, 20, 30, and 40 volume. So actually we only recommend that you tone with zero lift developer and our express tones, because this is going to give you the true demi deposit with no lift. And that's again, always desired when you're not wanting to expose any underlying pigment in the client's natural hair. I hope that gives you a good explanation on that. Let me scroll down. You guys are having such good questions. I love it. Thank you so much for interacting. And um, I see a couple people asking about the screenshots as far as my swatch book pages are going. And I know it's a little difficult to see with my light. So what I'm gonna do is after the live, you guys can go to my Instagram page. It's tagged here um, in the comments. And I will screenshot these for you and put them up so you guys have this as a great reference if you don't have the Pravana book because Again, you guys, this is a great visual when you are lightening your client and seeing where their level is lifting. But again, it is on this page, but it's also on each box. So again, for example, this is purple tourmaline and on the box right here, it has a level nine. That means purple tourmaline is most ideal at a level nine. Isn't that kind of cool? You know, over at Pravana, you guys, we want to work smarter, not harder, and we're always thinking about the stylus and what you guys can use every day behind the chair. So let me pop down here. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are loving this contest. This contest content, goodness, you guys, I need another cup of coffee. So somebody asked, can we mix Vivids with 10 volume developer to make it last longer? This is a great question. So the answer is actually no. So all of our Vivids are what we call a semi-permanent color or a direct dye, which means it comes right out of the tube and goes right on the hair. No developer required because we've already pre-lightened the client. However, if you are looking for something that is gonna last a little bit longer, we do have a newer addition to our permanent chroma silk line and it's called Vivids Everlasting. So, so this is Vivid's Everlasting. 
This is the color in Poisonberry. So the Vivid's Everlasting line is going to be a permanent Vivid-like color. These are wonderful for using them by themselves to give, again, a nice Vivid type look. Or you can also mix the Vivid Everlasting line with our existing Chromosol Cream hair color using 10, 20, 30, or 40 volume. I hope that answers your question. Okay, guys, what else we got? You guys got lots of good questions. I am loving it. Loving it, loving it. Okay, so someone asked, after your color, what is the best conditioning treatment that I have found using post color? Wonderful question that's so important, especially when you're dealing with clients who have had their hair lightened maybe a few times because they've had you know multiple vivid services. Their ends might be a little porous. So the number one product that I recommend You guys are making me work run around my studio today so the product that i recommend after before and after any color service is going to be the pravana silk degrees prep and treat treatment this is a five minute treatment that you can do at the shampoo bowl before um before vivid service or after the vivid service any time in between as a standalone treatment it also has our reunite mending technology to go into the hair seal everything and just leave your hair beautiful silky and shiny Hope that answers your question. All right, you guys had such good questions. Okay. Someone asked, could you also use uh, the Perfect Blonde Shampoo to tone at the bowl? That's another great question. So we all know purple shampoo, we all love purple shampoo, and it definitely has its purpose. And in my opinion, the purpose is to cancel out any of those yellow underlying tones before a toner and after a color service. However, I always, um, in my opinion, I always want to use a purple shampoo in partnership with an actual toner because the, col the tone in our purple shampoo isn't strong enough to act as an actual toner, but you can also pair it with like our Express Tones Violet or our Express Tones Pearl for a longer lasting cool toned blonde. Hope that answers your question. All right. Let me scroll down. All right. Oh, you guys, this is so much fun. I, again, I know I'm talking really fast. I just have a lot of information. I always get so excited about education, especially when it comes to vivid colors. And I know that um, fashion colors are so popular nowadays. But again, one thing to remember is that they don't always have to be on a level 10. Each color has its designed level to make it the maximum best color that you can make it. Um, again, I showed you guys these swatches um, from the book here that I will go ahead and post on the Pravana Instagram as well as my Instagram. So you guys can really have a screenshot of that. Let me scroll down. Hi guys. So again, please drop in the comments. Do you guys have any specific um, examples of um, issues you've run into or anything like that? Because I can just talk about this all day long. So um, I maybe we'll just go ahead and move into talking about um, some of my favorite vivid formulas. Do you guys like that? Yeah? Cool. So I love this one and this one. Orchids. So these are some of my absolute favorite vivid colors. So we have Wild Orchid, Green, and Sunstone. So again, I love Wild Orchid because it is such a deep, rich tone. I'm going to go ahead and show you that, guys, right here. So this is the swatch for Wild Orchid. I love using it um, in my sunset melts. It's a nice, deep base and blends beautifully into oranges and yellows for that beautiful fall look. Um, and I don't know if you guys know me, but my favorite color is orange. So when Pravana came out with our sunstone color, I was just in love. This is the perfect combination of pink and orange to create a beautiful peach color. I also love mixing sunstone with equal parts of our clear pastel to create a very soft pastel peach. And then moving on to the cool side of things, I love, where did the box go? So many boxes. So. 
um, are Vivid's Green. Now, Vivid's Green traditionally will go on a level nine, but I love the I love using Vivid's Green with our clear dilute and our clear pastel to create a really nice teal. So our green is actually blue based. So the more that you dilute it, the more it becomes a nice teal tone. And again, that's one thing that I love about our color line is we have all the additives, we have pastels, we have like five different shades of purple. You guys can really customize colors for your clients. Tell me your favorite colors below. I want to know. Um, someone, I see a few of you asking for my Instagram. So excited you guys want more information. My Instagram is at Taylor Ray, R-A-E underscore hair. Hopefully Demetra can tag it in the comments. And I would love to hear from you guys if you have any questions about Pravana, Vivids, coloring in general. Um, I always want to share my tips and tricks with you guys. Let me see. So someone asked, does the conditioner help to improve the porosity so the color takes better? That's a wonderful question. And I believe she is referring to the silk degrees treatment that I discussed earlier. And the answer is yes. This is a wonderful porosity equalizer that you can do before a toning service, after a toning service, before and after any color service or vivid service. Yeah, vivid service. Um, equalizing porosity is very, very important, especially when it comes to vivid colors, because if the ends are very porous, they might not hold on to the color as well, especially if, say, you're using a pastel or more of a smoky tone. You definitely want to take care of the porosity, and this is the product to do it. Plus, it smells amazing, and my clients are absolutely in love, so I hope you guys get your hands on this to try it out. Hi guys, so many guys are saying hi to me, I love it. So a few of you guys keep asking about my hair color again, so I'm so glad to see new faces. So I will definitely go over my color again. So my color was applied on a clean level 10 and I use Smoky Silver Express Tones and Express Tones in clear equal parts with Zero Lift Developer for 20 minutes. One thing I love about the Smoky Silver Express Tones is that it's violet based. So if there is a hint of you know, yellow or any warmth in the hair, it will cancel that out and leave a beautiful smoky tone. Um, it has been a few weeks since I've washed my hair. However, I do wash it with the purple shampoo, um, our purple perfect blonde shampoo once a week with cold water. So that definitely helps to elongate the length of my color. Okay, so you guys, this is so much fun. I love this. So someone asked that, she said that she had an issue with the silver, uh, let me see, my issues are that when I've used silver and I use half silver and half clear to make it white, why does it sometimes come out purple? So her question is that sometimes she feels like her silver is still on the purple side of things instead of a true silver. And this is a great, um, this is a great topic and it all really depends on your client's base. But let's just say you live to a to put in the blended neutrals into our chroma silk collection. So the blended neutrals, Everything is in that name right there. So neutral. If you guys have been using Pravana for even a little bit of time, you'll notice that our N series is actually natural. And there is actually a big difference between natural and neutral. So I want to know if you guys are coming from other places that you've used neutrals before and if you know the difference, because I'm going to tell you, we're going to go over naturals versus neutrals. So all of our N series with Chroma Silk is beautiful. They've always given us 100% gray coverage. They're gorgeous, but the N series in Pravana stands for natural. So the difference between natural and neutral is a pretty big difference. Neutral is going to be a little warmer and natural is going to be a little cooler just by the pure basics of color knowledge. So when you look at a natural series, it's going to contain the three primary colors, which is red, yellow, and blue, right? Natural and neutral both contain these three primary colors. We are saving this live, so don't worry, you can watch it whenever you want. 
Naturals contain more blue. Uh, you got it, girl. Um, so naturals contain more blue. Um, not even necessarily, but you're going to see more of that blue. So I'll break it down here a little bit. Natural is going to have all three of those primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. So the general rule here is that blue is bully. So blue is going to be the strongest, most pigmented molecule within those three primary colors. So naturals actually contain equal parts of red, yellow, and blue, but blue is going to take over and be the most dominant um, tone. So it's going to overall take over that tone and make it cooler blue based tone. Neutrals know that that blue is bully, so they're actually gonna try to counteract that blue with more red and yellow tones. So that's why you'll see neutrals as a bit warmer because it's going to contain more yellow and red molecules to overcome that blue molecule. So let's say that a neutral is going to contain two parts red, two parts yellow to one part blue, whereas natural contains one part of red, yellow, and blue, so that blue is going to take over and be the most dominant tone. Okay, we all get it? So when you're looking at naturals, especially our natural series, our natural series does contain a slightly cool blue base. What that means is it's actually an amazing series. Our OGN series has that cool base and it really does reflect a lot of people's natural tones. When you put it on someone who has naturally level five hair, if you're putting a 5N on them, it's going to look like their natural color because it's a slightly cooler blue base. Natural has blue the bully in it, woo, you got it. So this is for Pravana color, just so you're aware, we're going over the Pravana blended neutrals, which is our newest color launch for June. So now we have only had naturals, right? Now we're introducing neutrals, which is huge for Pramana. Connecting, we're reconnecting. There we are. Can you guys hear me? Can you see me? Everything's good with the connection. So if you are an OG Pramana user, you know that using the naturals has been amazing, but we have not had a neutral before. So the neutral is going to have that warmer base. So if you're looking to create a beautiful blended look, maybe you want someone who needs 100% gray coverage and you think that you're gonna use one of the natural series, but you decide, I want it to have a little bit of gold and violet to it. So in the past, you would have to have mixed something that has a level, um, five with a three, which is gold, and a seven, which is violet. But you would also have to mix whatever percentage of gray your client had, you'd have to mix that percentage of that tone into a natural. So now you don't have to do that. So we now have seven pre-blended shades in the blended neutral series. What that means is all of these, all seven of these colors, all seven, of the blended neutrals are going to give you 100% gray coverage. When you mix them on top of the N or three series, you're also going to get 200% gray coverage. So if you have ever had any hard time with a resistant gray or white client, you will not have a hard time anymore because we now will offer 200% gray coverage. On top of that, like I said, you will have your pre-blended mixtures now. So picking up my first one right here. So this is our level 7 NTI, which is going to be our neutral ash. A neutral ash is going to be so beautiful because it has that warmer element of a neutral, but it's also going to have that ash base. So it's not going to bring them too cool, but if someone still wants that ashy looking brunette, it's not going to bring them to that blue ash anymore. Game changer, I'm telling you, girl. Okay, so now that we're talking about the Blended Neutral collection, now I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about actually blending. So if you guys have tried our newest launch up before the neutral, um, the Blended Neutrals, we have our Express Tones After Dark. Some of the Express Tones After Dark are the Neutral Ash and the Dark Neutral Pearl. Have you guys used those? Express tones yet? Have you gotten the chance to use the Express tones after dark? I want to see some hands. Let me know if you've used them or not. So ash base that covers gray neutral. So um, 
any of these blended neutral series are going to cover 100% gray. Um, also, our natural series did cover 100% gray. It does cover 100% gray as well, but the neutral series is going to give you a slightly um, warmer base, rather, and it's also going to have a pre-blended mix in there as well. Yes, Express Tones After Dark, they're so good. They're my favorite. Um, one of my favorite launches of all time. So right when we came out with the Express Tones After Dark, that was a game changer already because that gave us our neutrals and it branched off into these blended neutrals into our Chroma Silk series. So Express Tones are five minute toners. They are also ammonia free toners. Um, are they available on Amazon? We are a professional hair color company only. So you can get all of Provana products from your local licensed beauty salon supplier. Um, I've just used Vivids, was a bit scared of the normal colors, but I must try them out. Oh my God, you have to use Chroma Silk. Chroma Silk is literally one of the amazing, most amazing color lines I've ever used. The main thing that you're gonna notice when you're using Chroma Silk is the shine. Everyone always notices the shine, especially when they start to use Provana for the first time. Every client that I used Provana on for the first time, they were like, oh my God, my hair is so shiny. What did you use on it? I didn't use anything, girl. It was all in the color. So all of our Chroma Silk hair color does contain silk amino acids, and that is going to actually penetrate into the cuticle and really show off that shine that is in that color. Um, also, the blended neutrals are proven to last 30 washes. So you're gonna see that richness in that beautiful shine and color for up to 30 washes. The shine is unreal, you guys. So when I started using the Express Tones After Dark, one of my favorite Express Tones After Dark shades was the Express Tones Dark Natural Ash, Neutral Ash. Um, the Neutral Ash is going to give you that perfect shadow root. Another thing that I want to say that I love doing with the Dark Neutral Ash Express Tone, we have a lot of girls, I primarily do blondes, and I have a lot of girls that start to see darker hair or start to see a darker shadow root, and they're like, you know, I'm thinking I want to do that. And then, of course, as someone who, you know, you have this client that you worked so hard to make this perfect blonde, and now they want to go darker is terrifying, right? So the dark express tones are going to give you that versatility to be able to get them darker, but also not have to commit to a permanent base. So what I always do is taking baby steps, right? So I take a baby step into, okay, let's give, let's give Sabrina here a nice reverse balayage, okay? Let's drop her root, let's darken her, richen her up a bit. And then I'm gonna start to use the Express Tones After Dark. I'm gonna use the Dark Neutral Ash. I'm gonna put that on at the bowl, zero lift developer, which is going to create a demi-permanent result because there is no ammonia. Then she comes back after she's faded a bit, she loved it, she wants to commit fully now, she wants to go full on permanent, right? So now I can take the Express Tones, um, I can go from the Express Tones After Dark and go into the blended neutral series from, from our Chroma Silk permanent line. So when you're dealing with our Chroma Silk Permanent line, you can still mix with our Zero Lift Cream Developer. The Zero Lift Cream Developer is going to still give you a Demi-like result, but the Chroma Silk Blended Neutrals Collection does have ammonia in the actual color tube. So you just have to keep that in mind because it does still contain ammonia. Our Express Tones do not. So now we can take her permanent from anywhere using 10 to 20 volume. So then when we're using 10 to 20 volume, we can apply her shadow root, her reverse balayage on dry hair, and it's going to actually stick to the hair. It's gonna last up to 30 washes and she's gonna feel more permanent, right? So this is Sabrina here. At first, we decided that we were doing baby steps. We used the Express Tones After Dark, the Dark Neutral Ash. Then we washed her out, we faded her, and then we decided, you know what, we're gonna decide to use a more permanent color and we want to actually dive deeper and make a commitment to a more brunette look. So then I'm gonna show you, this is one of my favorite tones that I actually used on her. And like we said, 
our three represents a gold and our seven represents a violet. So you can tell I used this guy here. This is my really lovely, beautiful um, color box. So this is the 6NT37. I know that sounds confusing, but when you guys look at the box, you don't have to be like a mathematician to figure out what's on our boxes because it also has, it's gonna have the numbers and it's gonna have the letters. So this is going to represent your six neutral golden violet. So if we think of what gold and violet make together, it's the perfect, beautiful, blended neutral. That's why this series is called the blended neutrals, you guys. I remember so many times I've mixed a 0.7 with a 0.3 to create that rich violety gold and create that perfect neutral um, brunette. But now I don't have to do that because it literally just comes in one tube. So that's what we used on her. I did use zero lift. I'm a zero lift girl. I love doing a demi like result. Um, like I said, I have so many blonde clients and I never truly trust their commitment levels because we all think that we want to commit to brunette until we don't anymore. And then we want to be full blonde. And then I'm looking at a color correction. I'm like, girl, why? So using zero lift developer just gives me that peace of mind. It gives the cuticle that more permanent like feel, but it's going to still give us some fadage and a little bit more versatility when it comes to lightening it out of the hair. So as you guys can see, this is a really nice blend. We still have a nice face frame right here, but this is what I call the teardrop shadow root technique. So I did do a reverse balayage on her, so I'll pull her apart and you'll see that we did pull through some panels. But this is the technique that I do for any type of shadow root. I'm natural black or close to natural black hair and I wanna highlight it but not bleach it. Would blonde dye work? Um, if you're doing any type of lightening, I always recommend going to see a salon professional and they will then let you know how light you'll be able to go in one sitting. Um, so when it comes to this teardrop technique, I do this on wet hair when I'm doing a shadow root. I do it on dry hair when I'm doing a look like this where we're making more of a bronze versus a blonde. So I'm going to push her forward a little bit here so that you guys can see what she looks like. So she's got that nice bright pop around her face, but if you also notice, she's got that depth and dimension coming through here as well. She was a full solid blonde before this, and this Sabrina mannequin, she's like really tan and she was a little washed out. So she was just like a really washed out, like level seven all over. So I did do a balayage to brighten up her blonde, and then we did a shadow root and dropped some low light panels through as a reverse balayage. When I say a teardrop technique, so I'm meaning literally like this. This is what a teardrop looks like, right? That's what you're gonna put like an aerial view on top of the head. So you're going to have the peak of the teardrop right here and then it's gonna widen, widen, widen until the crown of the head. So when I'm applying this color, I, actually apply my root colors a little bit differently than I feel like some people do because I want to get it done fast, especially when I'm working with a blonde and they are having a pretty decent change and drop in levels. I want to work really quickly and I want to get that um, saturation on there as well, but I also want to work fast, right? So I would love to see you do this. I'm about to. I'm not going to, obviously, she's already pre-colored, so I can show you guys. Um, Demi is used dry or wet. You can use Demi dry or wet. It just depends on the longevity and what look you're going for. Like I said, when I first dive deep into, when I take a baby step into taking a blonde to the brunette realm, I usually do it wet because that will give a little bit more, that'll give a little less, longevity because I want it to fade out a little bit faster. If you want more longevity, absolutely um, apply onto dry hair and let process 30 minutes. So one of my main techniques, um, technique tools for this look for the shadow root is going to be a chip paintbrush. So this is actually a two inch paintbrush, which means it's two inches wide. I like these paintbrushes because just like you would use a paintbrush in a balayage technique, 
to give it that light feathered look and to add that blend when you're doing lightener. You want that same thing when you're applying a shadow root. You want that blend. You want it to go from dark to lighter to lighter to lightest, right? So we want that nice gradual fade. So these little fluffy parts that start to loosen up at the end here, I love that because it doesn't have the full amount of density in the color brush like traditional color brushes do. So it's going to have that little feathering at the end here. So when you're applying that color and you're swiping down, you want to start to swipe and flick, and that's going to give you your kind of airbrush technique. So I'm going to show you on the side so you guys can see kind of what I'm doing with that motion here. So I'm going to start off in the front. Just like I said, it's that teardrop. So the front of the head is going to be the point. I want just a little tap of that color right there. So I literally will just do a tap. I'll tap one section further and then I'll start to go down and start to flick and then I flick it down further and further as I get down to the back of the head. What do you do? Would you do a teardrop if the client wears a side part? 100%. I wear a deep side part and I do the exact same thing on me when I do a shadow root. I literally still take, and you guys can see here, I still have a face frame right here but I would still take the teardrop just right off of the part line. And you can just bring it down a little bit further when you're talking about a deeper side part. You can take it down further on the side that they part on so that you still have an even look. Obviously, if this person flips their hair back and forth and sometimes they do wear it in a middle part, you wanna start in the middle part. For someone like me, I always wear a deep side part, so you're always going to um, do that teardrop just based off of the part line. Does that make sense? So, like I said, so we're starting here. We're starting where we just want a teeny, teeny tap of color. So we're just gonna tap here. We're gonna move the width of the color brush down. We're gonna tap and pull, tap and pull deeper, tap and pull deeper, tap and pull deeper. And then as you're coming down, you're flicking, right? So, great, we applied it onto the part line. I always do each side first. So I literally cover the entire part line first, so that part is gonna process first and foremost, and that's gonna process evenly. Because I'm not gonna have someone like dipping half of their head into the shampoo bowl and trying to just wash out half of their hair, right? So I want all of this to be processed at the exact same time, because this is what we're gonna see. Now, the biggest thing that I like to do when I'm doing shadow roots, I actually do this when I'm doing a root touch up, gray coverage. This is the exact technique that I use. So instead of doing four quadrants, right? I'm gonna do two quadrants. So I'm gonna split her right down the middle, literally from a middle part down to the nape of her neck. I'm just gonna do two huge sections. And then all I'm gonna do is part horizontally. So I'm taking literally from her part line her face frame all the way to the crown. I'm gonna pull that up straight. You guys can see that blend that we've got going on here. I'm gonna pull that up straight. I'm gonna really nicely and controlled flip that over so that she lays flat. Once she's laying flat, I'm gonna do that same technique, but I'm gonna do that upside down. So I'm gonna press, flick, press, flick, press, flick. And then as I come back further towards the crown of the head, I'm gonna again pull that color a little bit further down so that it gives that dropped effect right around the crown. So then you literally just start continuing to take full huge subsections from the front of the face to the back of the crown. Like I said, you're gonna take that really controlled, nice and controlled, pull that up, and then you're gonna press flick, press flick, press flick. And then when you get to the last section, you're gonna have this little guy here right behind the ear, and then you'll just have two to three more sections of just putting that on the back lower nape. That cuts your time in half for applying your color, you guys. Not only does it cut your time in half, but you also want to give that dropped effect, right? We wanna create that blend. 
So instead of us taking really tiny sections, finishing this whole first part, if this whole first section right here, let's say we did do this technique in four quadrants, so then I would have this back section here. This section would have color on it already. So I don't know where this blend ends and where I need to begin it from here. So really all I wanna do, I'm a very visual person. I do balayage most of the time versus foils because when I balayage, I can actually see where the hair is naturally lying and what it's gonna look like when it's done. I'm, I have a really hard time foiling because I see a full head of foils and I'm like, I have no idea how this girl's hair lays normally and what it's gonna look like when it's done. So this just, number one, saves you time and number two, you see exactly where that blend is going at all times. Then you literally just have to do the second half of her head and you're just gonna tap, pull, tap, pull, tap, pull, tap, pull, section, huge, subsection. You obviously want to make sure that your actual density of hair is finer because you're going to want to get that correct saturation, right? But look at that blend, you guys. I got to say, like, I don't like to toot my own horn very often, but look at her. She's so pretty. And you guys can tell too, if you are an avid user of our natural series, you can definitely tell that this is a neutral because this has that rich, violety, golden aspect to it, where our natural series is going to be a completely like cool blue base, right? So you can really see that rich, like violety, golden hue to her root and to that brunette. And it just gives that cocoa brunette that the girls are looking for, right? If you're wanting to bring a blonde into the brunette world, she's probably not wanting to be all over what her natural color that grows out of her head is. She might, and that's great. But most of them are wanting that like richness, some warmth, but not too warm. They want violet, but not too violet. So this gives you that perfect combination. Toot toot, honey, toot toot. Hey, hey -o. Um, Do you guys have questions? So I'm gonna keep reading your guys' questions as I go through here, um, but I also wanna show you we went over the blend of the shadow root. You can do this technique all day, every day on people that you just want to drop their root. They want that longer grow out time. They don't want high maintenance color right to their root where they're having to come in every four weeks. So this is obviously a super easy grow out. On top of it, I really, I'm not gonna hate on any money pieces because I love a money piece no matter which way you throw it. But what I really love to do is, like I was saying with that little tap in the front, tapping that root right where that money piece is and where that face frame is, gives her time to grow this out where it still grows out softly versus it being right to the point of contact where her hair grows out. So in literally three days from now, she's gonna have roots. Doing that little tap in the front makes a world of difference when you're doing money pieces and when you're doing a heavy face frame because it just softens that line right there so that she has that time to actually grow her hair out and it's not going to look a hot mess. Mama loves the low maintenance look. Yes, she does. When you're doing big sections of the shadow root, do you go back and comb through it all? Yes, I do. Thank you, Melody. Um, so that is a huge step in this process. So you're obviously gonna get this blend by using the chip brush, right? So you're creating that blend. The biggest thing that you wanna do, especially when you're using this technique on super light blondes, what can happen is splotchy madness. So if you start to grab the hair and then you pull that root color through and it starts to hit in little patches of blonde, it's gonna create little splotches. So there's a couple different combs that I like to use. I personally like to use like a barber comb. Um, there is a specific color comb that has like a little rotating thing inside of it to make sure that the color doesn't touch. But what I typically like to do to, you know, just not, you don't have to go out and get any crazy types of combs, just a wide tooth comb is gonna be perfect, barber comb. You're literally gonna have the comb right here, take it from the 
point of the most saturation, and then you're gonna drag it to the point of almost least saturation. So you don't wanna pull it through all the way to the blonde, you're only gonna pull it through to where you want the most saturation, and then you're gonna just literally comb and not pull through. You wanna comb and stop. So what I mean by that is, if you're combing through, you don't wanna comb through and then continue combing through the rest of the hair. If you wanna do this in sections, you can, or you can do this on the part line after you're completely done ap applying. So you're gonna take your comb and brush and stop, comb and stop, comb and stop, comb and stop. So you're gonna comb it and then literally take it out of the hair, comb it and then take it out of the hair because that way it's not gonna drag any of that dark product through to your blonde. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, what level did I use? So I use a level six, so it's the 6NT37, which is our neutral blended series gold violet. Three seven, gold violet. Um, so now that I've showed you guys that, thank you so much, Melody, for asking that question about the comb because comb is actually a big step in this technique. So another thing that you're gonna do, you can absolutely use this just for a dropped shadow root, but she in particular, like I was saying in the front, you can see that depth coming through. She is a reverse balayage. So I typically do the whole teardrop shadow root technique first, and then I go through, and then I'm gonna do my subsections. I do subsections just two in front of the ears, and then I go up the hair horizontally. So as I go horizontally, this first subsection is where I start, and you're gonna see that she has that depth and dimension through there. I do this first section with more depth and dimension because that's what you're gonna see when you pull the hair forward. It's obviously gonna be total personal preference whether they want this to be super bright for them to put it up in a ponytail, but you see all this depth comes through while she pulls it forward, but it's also just bright enough to where when she pulls it up, she doesn't look grown out. She still looks like a blonde, right? So I actually do my balayage and reverse balayage exactly the same. I do all straight across horizontal sections and I do bricklay um, technique. So what I mean by bricklay is this first section, if I were to be lightening her, I would take this part and this part here. I would be lightening those two sections right where the hairline hits. Then this middle section, I would be leaving out. So I would let that be her depth and dimension. So when I'm adding in that depth into a solid blonde, I'm literally going to just have her shadow here and here. And then this is gonna be the piece that I'm pulling through that depth and dimension. So you can see this piece is pretty much the lowest point of where that um, neutral, blended neutral is going to be located. And then same thing, I literally just go horizontal up the head and I just brick lay. So I brick lay and I pull through that shadow just in the pieces that I need that added depth and dimension. And then on the top here, I'm gonna leave the most blonde so that she still feels nice and bright. But as you dig through her hair, as she pulls it forward, as she pulls it back, you're still gonna see that nice transition from her root in through her mids. A lot of times with this reverse balayage technique, you wanna make sure that you're not necessarily pulling that dark color all the way through to the ends unless they wanna be super low lighted or they wanna have super dimensional look. Cause she has, Mostly, like all of her ends are blonde, but she still has that nice depth and dimension when you pull it forward. Do you use permanent or demi for shadow root? It's totally personal preference. Like I was saying before, just really depends on your client's commitment level. If they're blonde and they're wanting to go brunette, demi is definitely going to be the first step into the process because demi is going to fade out of the hair rather than grow out. And then if they love it, then you can do that same exact technique using a permanent color. If I'm doing just a shadow root, I typically use the Zero Lift Developer and I do it on wet hair. Okay. 
Thanks guys. Okay, so now that we've gone over that technique, can we please see the comb that you use? I don't have the comb here, I'm sorry, I'm the worst. But the comb that I use, I honestly will use any wide tooth comb that I have on hand. Typically it's a barber comb. So it's the comb that have, it has the handle that still has the holes through the handle. And then it's a really nice, big, wide, wide tooth comb. And like I said, the biggest thing is you can use, I'm not gonna tell you guys you have to use one particular fancy comb. The biggest thing is just when you are using the comb, make sure it's wider tooth, it's not a fine tooth comb and you're pulling it through and then pulling it out. So you're not pulling it all the way through to that blonde. Can you show me the products one more time? Yes, of course. So like we were saying, the Blended Neutral Collection has seven premixed shades. I am going to be doing a um, IG takeover after this. So I'm gonna kind of break down all of the things that we talked about as far as the, the technical aspect goes of what's natural versus neutral, um, different shades that you can mix, and then you guys can obviously see all seven of our blended neutral shades. The one that we used today was the 6NT37. That's going to be our blended neutral um, violet. It's a golden violet. Number three is gold and number seven is violet. Okay, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I love doing these, I love talking to you guys. I know it's a lot of information and it's a little harder to see that technique done um, already on a pre-done mannequin, but if you guys wanna see more of a full length video of me doing this actual shadow root technique on a full blonde um, with the Blended Neutral series, let me know. As always, if you guys have any questions about the Blended Neutrals, you can message me, you can message Pravana. We are super responsive to any of your guys' questions. The mannequin has chubby cheeks. She does, doesn't she? She's a little, she's a little cutie. I haven't seen Sabrina before. <laughs> um, so if you guys have any questions, please, please let us know. Definitely don't forget to follow me at It's Aspen Ray. If you guys have any questions, feel free to DM me and DM Pravana. Don't forget to go out to your local state beauty supply, salon center, Cosmoprof, Armstrong McCall, whatever you got in your area. Go and get the Blended Neutral Collection. Let me know how you like it. Please, please, please tag me and Pravana in all of your guys' creations. We love seeing you guys replicate these um, techniques. And I will see you guys very shortly. Actually, really shortly, like in a minute or two for my Instagram stories. Okay, bye.